Welcome to my channel and I'm here to inspire you, give you crochet advice and help you along with your next project. If you enjoyed this pattern please give me a thumbs up or even comment so I can gauge your interest. It helps me to know what to film next. I'm not very formal. Here's today's zinger. Sometimes I just want to crochet and ignore life. <laughs> just forget about everything and everyone. You know what I'm saying? And just crochet the day away. And without further ado let's get on with today's tutorial. Welcome back to the Crochet Kratos host my friends over at Yarnspirations.com. I'm your host Mikey. Today is the Tunisian Stepping Texture Cowl designed by Anita. So what we have today is a really great little little cowl in order to put together with your Tunisian and it's actually really not hard. It looks complicated but it's not. So Anita was really inspired by the Showtime hat that we did and she wondered if it can be done in Tunisian. So we, she came up with a concept in order to do it. So we're going to be doing a step stitch in this particular one. Now we just came up with the name of that. There could be an actual real name for that in Tunisian but that's what we have. So you can leave me a comment if you actually know the name of what I'm about to show you. So I'm gonna have a little sample for you next and I'm going to demonstrate that and we're gonna come it all together and we're gonna be using our Tunisian afghan hook as well. So looking at it from a zoomed out point of view we're doing a flat panel. So if you really love this you can actually do this as a blanket if you wish. And it is a multiple of six plus one. So you chain six, 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 six and then at the end of it once you're happy with it just chain one more and then you'll have the balance of this to be able to complete this. So this here is a really great idea and we're using it roll with it melange as the coloring and you use approximately half a ball in order to make one cowl but you can go even bigger. So if you'd like to make it taller you can and what I've done is that I've done this sample and then I'm going to show you how to put it together so that we can create the cowl in the end. But I have to get you to that point uh, in this moment. So you will see a definite seam line here on the back but as you can see in the front it's really quite amazing. So wherever the colors fall that's where they fall and I'm gonna be demonstrating with Karen one pound today and uh, you're recommending well she's recommending an eight millimeter size L crochet hook and it's approximately 12 inches long and I'm gonna talk about the ins and outs of Tunisian in just a second. So in Tunisian usually what it is it's a very long hook with a stopper at the end. You can find something like this on Amazon or online crafting stores. Um, I found they're very hard to find in person. So this one here is a double ended Tunisian hook, an Afghan hook and you can do double ended features but we're not gonna be doing that today. I just like this hook and it's the right size for me. So you're going to notice in Tunisian is that there's a lot of tension in the stitches. So what happens with this is that you have to have a bigger than normal hook in order to uh, compensate for that. So if you for example look at the ball and it says that it's a five millimeter size H um, crochet hook if you use a five millimeter size H in the Tunisian it's going to be extremely tight. So you wanna go up at least two sizes in order to compensate. So when you're using the roll with it melange or any other kind of yarn make sure you go up two sizes for this in order to have it relax and be the pretty much the right size. As I mentioned to you you can change the size of this cow by keeping it in stitch multiples of six plus one and therefore you can customize it if you'd like to make it a child's version. Let's talk about the orientation of the hook next. When I'm doing Tunisian I like to keep my hand near to the center or the counter balance point. So if I go too far back the front just wants to keep falling on me and I'm constantly using my muscles to kind of pull it up so that it goes down. So if I'm too close to the project the back also wants to fall down so I'm using the muscles in my hand to compensate for that. So whenever the project is on this hook I always wanna keep my hand at the counter balance point so that it's just balanced and I'm not using any muscles going in either direction but just staying flat. So that's something that you may have to decide for yourself what's more comfortable. So let's uh, begin right away and we're going to start with our beginning chain. I am just gonna do a swatch with you on camera. I'll take you through the entire repeat of this and then I'll bring you back to that other sample. We'll, we'll finish it off together. So I'm just putting this here. Uh, I have a tendency when I'm teaching this to bang the hook off the table. So I prefer you not hear that. So that's why that's there and we're going to start immediately with the slip knot in our hand. I'm going to assume that you know how to crochet to a certain degree and so we'll start off with our slip knot as we begin. Keep a long tail just so that you have it and you're going to insert your afghan hook into there. Remember that it's an eight millimeter size L so you wanna make sure it goes even bigger than what si the size recommendation is. So this is carrying one pound so this would be technically too big for a regular crochet hook but it's Tunisian so I want that. That does not count as one of, on the hook so you can either chain 79 
to get exactly what any sample is or you can chain a multiple to six plus one which which is what I'll do. So you can just count as normal. So one, two, three, four, five, and six and there's one multiple there. So you can determine if it's big enough, yes or no. If not, keep on going. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. Big enough, yes or no. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Now let's just say that this is long enough and I'm happy with it. Once you're happy with it and you are customizing like this, just chain one more to have the counterbalance for this. So chain 79 or just exactly how I showed you and now we're gonna go on for uh, row number one. In Tunisian we are going to do a forward pass. So we're gonna go in the direction of the point of the hook forward and then we're gonna return back. So row number one is just not straight across. It's across and back. So it's a forward pass and a return pass. And so you will see in the instructions it's FWP. That's forward pass and the return pass is RET. P. You're gonna go second chain from the hook and watch what we do. We wanna collect these like cl a clothesline. So just start with the very first one, second chain from the hook and you wanna gather the back hump of the chain. So you're just gonna go in. It's awkward when you first start this for the first time but once you get more material into your hands it becomes much easier. So put it into that, that chain, yarn over, pull through and slide it down the shaft to get the distance of the stitch diameter and then keep that on there. So go to the next back hump. So once you do the first one, the next ones are just gonna be sitting there ready for you. So just going in, yarn over, through and shaft it. And I need you to go all the way across your chain by going through, yarn over and shaft. So just boom, boom. Okay, just to get that. If you leave it down in the throat here, it will not be the same thickness. So you always wanna shaft it. So go into the back of the chain. Just take your time, it's not a race. And now you can put me on hold and then just meet me at the end of this here. This is the first part of row number one. Now as you're working your way across, if you're running out of space, just kind of compress it together. Okay, you should, you'll notice that a little bit on there. And if it becomes so much, your hand can go right up over top of this. It doesn't matter so much. And just keep your, your um, stitches going across. And as I said, once you get more of this project done, it gets a lot easier to hold. And you're gonna go right to the very last chain that's available to you. And then this is where you're gonna do a return pass. So everything's looking good. So let's talk about the rolling up of a cro of one of these Tunisian projects. In Tunisian we never turn the hook the other way generally speaking for most of the times. There could be reasons for it but most times it's not. So we go across and then back. It's like an old fashioned typewriter that I learned on actually that's how old I am. So what I would like to do is that you're going to notice is because we never turn it is that the tension will always stay on the front side. So this roll will always start to happen right immediately as we begin. So people have said complaints in the past where I can't see your work because it's rolling. That is something natural. Now the bigger the hook is the less of the roll will happen because there's less tension. And so if I match the yarn size to the hook size that was on the ball band for Tunisian, the roll would be so significant and that's why increasing this hook is important. Let's do the return pass and show you how this is done. The return pass will be done the same way every time for the entire project. To do the return pass, it's always the same. The first loop is by itself. Using in crochet, when we chain up, we chain up on this side and we move across. In Tunisian, it's backwards. So the chain up is actually done on this side. So you're gonna yarn over and pull through just the first loop only. That's your chain one. And now the remaining of this is going to be in sets of two. So yarn over, pull through two, and just slightly pull it off the hook. So that was one and so you don't need to count. Just yarn over and pull through two loops each and every time and you're going to notice is that there's gonna be a big space in the, the project itself. It's the forward pass that fills in those spaces. So if you see that, don't worry about it. Just keep on going and smile. <laughs> are you gritting your teeth or are you smiling? That's the great question today. You can leave me a comment. 
So just continue just to yarn over and pull through the two loops until you have one loop back on your hook and that is the forward and return paths for row number one. If you think you got it so far just st stay with me because row number two is gonna change just slightly and I need you to know where to stick the hook. <laughs> okay, let's keep this family friendly. Let's uh, begin row number two. Row number two, three and four is all gonna be the same. Now you're going to notice it's like a, uh, a fence, right? And so you have what is called is these vertical lines. These vertical lines are what you're going to be playing in. So the very first vertical line, ignore it. You're not doing anything with this. It's always the second one in. So before we went on the back hump of the chain, we yarned over and we pulled up. This time what we're going to do, this is called the Tunisian simple stitch. You're going to just move the hook so that it's just capturing the front line that goes straight on down. So just slide it right in there and stay toward the front side of the project. You want to yarn over, I'll demonstrate a few times, and pull through that and shaft it. Okay? And you will notice when you do this is that it fills in that gapping space that you once had. See that? It forces this to sit down. So you're just gonna go into the very next vertical that you can see. Going in, yarn over, and through, and shaft. I don't think the word shaft is technically in the instructions but that's just my own thing. So just going into the vertical strand, yarn over, and shaft. I'll keep the camera going for a bit. And you're just collecting those verticals. I'm not counting them. I don't need to yet. We will be counting in the future but not yet. And as you get used to it, you can get faster and faster. <laughs> And do you see when you pull this up, it pulls this stuff that you just did and down into the hole. It fills it in. Okay, so you just keep moving all the way down. So when you think you're ready, then just pause, pause me now and I'll meet you at the end of this row. I have to show you where to stick your hook because it's unique. And I'll be, be right back in a moment. Now I'm coming all the way to the edge. Okay, this is the one right before the edge. Where you go in in the edge matters. If you go into just one strand, you end up with this god awful loop hole. And you don't want that, right? So what you have to do is remember that we did a chain one when we came back, when we went and did our return pass. See the two strands that are right here, right between my pinch fingers and then you see a strand underneath. I want you to go into this like it's a regular stitch in crochet. So when you stick in your hook on the very last one, do not just do the vertical because you'll end up with a really big ugly hole. But what I want you to do is stick in your hook and capture the two outside strands as if it's a regular crochet hook or regular crochet stitch. Do you see that? So there will be one strand under the hook and two on top. And then you yarn over and pull through and that concludes that and there is no hole. Isn't that fun? So that's how you would finish the forward pass of this particular project. Always go into that and I'll demonstrate this again in the future. So to do the return pass for row number two is how many loops do you pull through to start? It's always gonna be the same. I'll do it quietly. Did you say one? That's one because it is a chain one. It's the building of this row. So now you can yarn over and chain through two all the way back and it's gonna create those big holes again in the project that will fill in the next time that we do the forward pass. So you yarn over and pull through two and just pull the project off the hook. Now the, the project can be way down here. You can just kind of compress it if you need to and I, I'm always keeping my hand back so that the counter balance of this is maintaining so that I don't have to waste muscle, muscle power. <laughs> Why burn extra calories, right? <laughs> so I wanna go all the way back until there is how many loops left on the hook. Did you just say one? That's the right answer. If you said two, uh, I don't know about you. So you go all the way back and then you'll end up with these big holes again. 
there. And now let's do row number three. So let's do row number three. I'm not gonna go as slow now because it's the same information. So we start with the second one that's in from the edge. So we never worry about this one right here. So we just immediately slide in to the vertical strand and you're going to yarn over and pull through. I'm gonna do just a few of these and I'm gonna show you something. So I'm just going to just keep getting these vertical strands and collect them and shaft it. If you're noticing that your project is going up on an angle, do you see how the stitches are kind of offset from each other? That's right. The next stitch that comes off always comes to the, the, ha the hand that's holding the hook. Therefore in Tunisian most of the projects when you see them they're always on a slight slant. That's because of this. This is just the nature of Tunisian. So if you're seeing your work is slanting it's not you. It's the type of stitch that it's uh, going into. This is part of the, the properties of Tunisian. So people think that they're screwing up when they see um, the slant going but it's actually normal. So you're just gonna collect all the way to the other side. This is row number three in the forward pass and I'll be at the end of the row in a moment. So you're gonna notice the curling is happening. Don't worry about it. Just keep on going. It will, the weight of this will hold itself down. So then you're just gonna come and you're gonna come all the way to the very edge. Do you see where you need to go? I'll hold for a second. So you don't want the one strand. You want the two on the outside so that it looks like a regular stitch of crochet and then yarn over pull through. And then we're gonna do the return pass then for row number three. So yarn over pull through the just the one and then do your twos all the way back and I'll see you at the end of this side. So this is the, gonna be the end of row number three in a moment. So let's begin row number four forward and return. You already know what to do so I'm just gonna just tell you to do it. So just go forward and then return just as you know it for number four and then I'll meet you on number five in just a moment where we're gonna start something new for the remaining of your project. So forward and return pass for uh, Tunisian Simple Stitch. I'll be right back. So right now I'm at the end of number four. I'm about to start number five. So five through ten is going to be the repeat in this particular pattern in order to go right to the very end of it. Once we do it once we're gonna do it twice more and then you're considered done but if you'd like it to be taller you can. So what we have to do is change our approach and add the step stitch and so let me take you back to the other sample and show you what that is. It may be hard to see on this particular sample because it's so dark but what it is is that you are going to do everything in sets of five. So one, two, three, four, five is the Tunisian simple stitch and then the sixth stitch falls down and does the step stitch. And so every time we do a row the step stitch is going to change in position. That's why there's a repeat of five through ten. So what I want to do is get myself established because once I get myself established it's just gonna travel up on an angle uh, like this and be able to fill it in. It's very very easy to do but sometimes saying it on a pattern is kinda hard. So this is the whole point of tutorial work today. So let's show you how to do a row number five. So let's do row number five. In row number five it's gonna be like a dance and we're gonna dance and shuffle over five stitches then we're gonna shuffle down on the next one and we're going to shuffle in the down direction. So one, two, three, four, five. So we're gonna go into this stitch, this stitch and this stitch and then back up to the top of this stitch. So we shuffle over five down and back up so that that will equal the sixth stitch. Watch how it's done. It's actually, it reminds me of the game Battleship. I was telling Anita that yesterday. So we want to do the next five in a row as a Tunisian simple stitch. So just what you already know is that you just count those out. So one, two, three, four, and five. Because this is the very first time we're doing this is that you're not gonna see the orientation of where the step stitch falls but in the future when you repeat round, uh, row number five you'll be able to see it immediately. So once you have the first five done don't include this loop so there's five. You're gonna do the step stitch. So you're gonna come into the very next one and you're gonna Tunisian simple stitch. So we have one there. Then we come immediately down and do this one and hold that on the hook and then immediately down one more time. So we're on the third row below and Tunisian that. 
but we have to get ourselves back to the top of this. So to do that we're gonna yarn over and pull through two loops only and then we yarn over and pull through the final two loops which takes us to the back of that or sorry to the top of that strand. So now this here has a tendency to kind of roll and block your view of this stitch here and behind. So just make sure that you get the next vertical when you start the next five again. So keep the yarn in behind. Don't let it stay in front. So keep the yarn in behind and do the next five. So shuffle over five. So Tunisian simple stitch. So one, two, three, four, and five. And then you're gonna come on down. So you, using the next one you're gonna go there, here, here and then back up. So you go into this one, go down one to the next row and down one again and you need to get yourself back to the top. So you yarn over, pull through two loops and then two loops to take yourself all the way back up and you can see the texturing is actually happening. So you're gonna repeat this all the way across and then finally the last six stitches are going to be the Tunisian simple stitch wh which will take you right to the end. So you're just gonna go in and Tunisian simple stitch right to the end. So there's the last six. So we have two, three, four, five. And normally the sixth one would been would have been the step stitch but because it's the side here you just wanna go into what you already know and making sure that you get into the two strands that make it look like a regular crochet stitch. Pull through and then that is done. So you're gonna do your return pass like you already know it. So yarn over, pull through the first loop and then do your twos all the way back and this will conclude then row number five for the forward and return pass. And I'll be right back to start you on row number six in a moment. So just using that in groups of two, there's nothing special about it and you can see how everything will line up perfectly. I'll be right back in a moment. So let's do row number six. So the difference is this time is that everything is gonna shift in the direction of the point of the hook over by one. So the next step stitch will appear after the other one here and so it'll be after the other one here. So in order to have this continually build up is that the very first stitch out on row number six is gonna be your step stitch. So we immediately start in, start in the first one and go down and then the next five in a row will each be the Tunisian simple stitch and the one right after this one here is going to be the step stitch if your counts are proper. So let's begin. So you're gonna go into the first one and do your step stitch. So in and then going down and then down so you're three down. So it's a total of three in there. So then yarn over, pull through two and two and that takes you back to the top of that. So then if you peel it back the next five in a row, the fifth one should be the step stitch if your counts are right and you are just going to do your Tunisian simple stitch. So we have one, two, three, four and five. If you don't think you need to obsessively count, if you can keep an eye on your stitches, it, it does a great help to you if you will count. But if you look at this one as being the last fifth one and you can confidently see that you see five loops between the last one that you went down on, you don't have to excessively count. So the next one has to be a step stitch that goes down. So you're gonna come to the next one and then go down and down one more time and it doesn't go down as far as the original. That's what makes it go up on an angle. So now you pull through two and two. And then you start again the next five in a row. So we have one, two, three, four and five. And then your step stitch should be after this one which it is. So you come on down, so go there and then down and down and then pull through two and two to bring yourself back up and then the remaining stitches for this one here, there's a total of five stitches that are left and you're going to fill those in as Tunisian simple stitch right to the end. So you'll just keep going all the way across and that's how your ending will look. like that.
and then come into the end as you, as you know it. Then yarn over pull through one and then twos all the way back and this will complete then row number three or sorry <laughs> row number six. Have no idea where three came from. Let's continue our journey. So row number seven. Row number seven we're going to shift over again and so this time the very first one out is going to be um, what we have here is a Tunisian simple stitch and then the step stitch starts right after it. So then we just go into there and then down and down one more time and then back up. So pull through two and two. Now you're at the back of the top. So now everything is in groups of five like it was. So you can either count or you can look to where the step stitching is already. So we have one, two, three, four and five. So the fifth one is the step stitch from the existing one below. So the step stitch has to go right beside it. So in there and then down and down and then back up. So pull through two and two and then continue again again in the fives. Just keep in mind that sometimes this blocks that view. So make sure you just kind of use your thumb and making sure you start right away on the right one. So we have one, two, three, four and five and then down. So a step stitch is the next one and then pull through two to get yourself and two to get yourself back up and then the remaining that you have here there's going to be a total of four stitches left by the time you get all the way to the end and so you'll Tunisian simple stitch those. So one and I don't necessarily count that when you're not watching me. So you just go right to the end after you know that you don't have any more uh, step stitches to do. Come to the end, pull through one and then two is all the way back. So please do this. This is uh, row number seven and I'll be right back in a moment. So let's begin row number eight. So the step stitch is gonna start later. So the first two in a row then will be just your Tunisian simple stitch to get yourself started and then your step stitch starts after that. So we have one and then coming down two and coming down is three and then pull through two and two to get yourself back up. So the next five in a row will each be your Tunisian simple stitch to take you over to the next one. and your Tunisian simple stitch is your last one in the group in the five. You can almost see how it wants to separate itself on the hook which is great and now the next one is a Tunisian step stitch to go down. And pull through two, two to get back up and then you have your five again to take yourself across. Okay, and then everything is in sets of five and then step stitch down and you'll do this all the way across of course and then the very final edge that you will have left. In this case there will only be three stitches left. So we do the one, two and then the edge. and then come back. So just pull through one only and then two is all the way back and this is row number eight. Let's do row number nine. So row number nine is gonna come and start a little bit later for the step stitch. So the first three are going to be just regular Tunisian simple stitches. So one, two and three. See it's a lot easier for me to hold it in my hand because there's more work. The next one is going to be a step stitch. So just going in and then down and down and then pull through two and two back up and now the next five in a row will just be your Tunisian simple stitch as you know it. So we have one, two, three, four and five 
and then the next one is the Tunisian simple stitch to go down. And then back up. So pull through two and two. And you see everything's working on an angle. And so you do the next five and you'll continue this all the way across. Once you understand this pattern you can pretty much put the pattern away and just enjoy the journey. So the next one after this one here has to be a step stitch. And then you have two stitches left after the end of the last one to conclude then this row which is number nine. Okay, so you have this next one and then the edge is your final. Pull through one and then choose all the way back for row number nine and then row number ten is gonna be the last part of the repeat section before going back to number five all over again. So let's do row number ten which is the last part or last row of the repeat and so the first four in a row will each be a Tunisian simple stitch to get yourself back into the balance for the the repeat and once those are done then the step stitch goes then in the next one. So it keeps that diagonal going up. And then after that one's done everything's back in groups of five again. So we have one, two, three, four, and five and then the step stitch has to be after it. And then coming all the way back up and then continuing across and so you'll do that same thing going across as you know it. And there's only two stitches left so the second last stitch is going to be your last step stitch that will ever go down on an edge. So the edge will always stay nice and clean for you. And then your very last one is into the edge piece. And that was row number 10. So yarn over pull through one and then two all the way back and let's talk about the repeat and I'll get you started again on row number five just to make sure you understand because now that you can see the pattern there it's a lot easier now to continue with your repeats and you can go as big as you need to. So this is the end of the repeat number ten. So what I need you to do is go back through five through ten twice more. So do five through ten, five through ten and then that's it for this particular cowl but you can go as big as you need to go. So you can go through five through ten as many times as you want to. So I'm gonna get you restarted back on number five because this time now that five's going in you will see an orientation that has actually happened on this thing because before when we did it there was nothing at the very beginning to align with. So let's uh, just show you quickly number five one more time and then I'm gonna show you how to bind off at the end of this and then show you how to close off your cowl. So I go back to the instructions for number five. We have video chapters in this particular video so that you can use those to scroll easily back. So when we started the number five if you recall the first five in a row were each a Tunisian simple stitch. So we do the first five. And that will take you over top of the last uh, step stitch that was inserted there before. So then this next one, this is the next one and that's the step stitch to go in. And then pull through two and two to take yourself back up and then you're back in your groups of five again. So you're starting at the middle and the end of this one which is the repeater number five is exactly what you already know. The only difference is that you have more product or uh, project in your hands to hold. So you have your five and then you step stitch down. So let's just quickly talk while I'm just finishing up this. So the ending of this can be done at any time um, in the forward pass so when we go to do the bind off and uh, just make sure that uh, you're comfortable with doing so and I'm gonna show you how to do that anyway but you can do it at any point. You don't have to just go five through ten but you can always bind off on a forward pass at any point. So the last six here are just going to be your Tunisian simple stitch right to the end and then pull through one and then choose all the way back up. 
So I'm going to have you now continue to repeat. So go through five through 10 and then uh, five through 10 twice and make sure you get that done. I just showed you number five again. So just you're now ready for number six at this particular point and you can go as big as you want to and I'm gonna show you how to finish this off at the end. This is called the bind off which is next. Once your project is as big as you need to go, people think that this is where you end because you started here and you came back. But if you end here, you end up with these holes right at the end of the project and we know that when we do a forward pass, it forces this to turn over sideways and fill in the space like you see in the rows below. So the bind off is done as a Tunisian simple stitch and it can be done in any stitch but just keep it the same stitch of your project and this is called the bind off. To do that, you're going to go as if you're doing a Tunisian simple stitch and you're gonna pull through and through and that will close it off and the close off the hole and fill it in. So you go into the next one, pull through and through and you see you're finishing it. So you just keep going all the way across. Nice and simple. You wanna keep it just relaxed and you can see that it's filling in the holes that were once there to make it look finished. So I want you to go all the way across to bind off and then I'll be right back in a moment. You're gonna come in to the very end. So just do it as you normally do and then through and through. And then this is actually technically done. So when I go to finish this, I wanna keep a long enough strand so that I can sew the two sides together to form the cowl shape. So just cut it long enough so that you can use a tapestry needle and then just pull it through that final loop and that will lock it. Okay, and that's what your project will look like. So what I need you to do is that I need you to turn this so that it's inside out so you normally when you wear it, you'll have these texture but the back side looks flat. So I want you to do it so that the, the, the good side is inside the roll of this. So you're looking at the back side of the project when you go to sew this. Let me take a look uh, to the other sample just to verify. So in the other sample here, the only thing I did not do is do the bind off and so you can see that I'm just closing it off. You see the holes that are gonna get filled in and so you wanna just do it as I just showed you with the other sample and then I'll meet you on the other side here in a moment. But I just wanted to show you that it's the same thing of finishing the other sample of course because it's the same thing. And I just wanna point out one thing is that when you use these variegated or self transitioning yarn, the colors of the vertical stripes are usually different. So if you can identify what is vertical, it becomes a lot easier. But you can see if you look really carefully how the vertical lines all just line up with each other even though they're different colors as they transition down. So I'll be right back in a moment. So here's the final sample and we have the bind off is done. This is a side that people can see. This is called the good side and the right side actually technically and I want you to fold it so that the, the right side is on the inside of this. And I want you to fold it like this. And what we want to do is we wanna do a mattress stitch along the edge here so that everything will line up perfectly and because of the transitioning of yarn, if we do the mattress stitch, it will pull it nicely together and it'll make this particular strand, even though it's a different color at certain points, kinda hide in a lot better. So you're just gonna work your way all the way down the seam line to do that. So let me just show you here on the sample and how that's done. To do the mattress stitch, you're going to want to insert your strand into your tapestry needle and I want to go directly across like this to capture that so that it brings the two edges together and then I'm immediately gonna come on down and I wanna capture the actual project fibers itself. If I go into a big space, you're going to see this. So I wanna go into capturing more of the fibers than anything and then directly across again into the fibers and all I wanna do is that I wanna work myself all the way down like a zigzag doing this and it will pull it nice and tight. So just be very consistent about it. So just coming down and then across. And if you pull it nice and tight it won't be as visible. So please do this all the way across and I will be right back in a moment. So I just wanna take my time because this is a real sample for me to use. 
Another little tip when you're actually doing these kind of stitch work um, the way that the needle works is that it tends to unravel or untwist the strand. So when you're looking at it just make sure that you keep that twist so just rotate your your needle in your hand and so that it puts the twist back in. It just naturally does that on its own. I really don't know why. I have gone through my entire life thinking <laughs> why does that happen? And so if you know why that happens you can leave me a comment. It's obviously got something to do with how the hook is or how the needle is going in or something. I don't know. So I want to keep the edging exactly as is. So just make sure that you just keep things lined up right to the very end so that it becomes as even as possible. So this side here is drooping a little bit more so I wanna jump a little bit further down on the one side to kinda pull it back up a bit. Improvisation is the key. And so by the time I get all the way down there there should not be any extra material. So once I'm at the base of it I just wanna secure it and make sure that it's as even as it's possibly gonna get. Kinda pull things together. And once you're happy with it then you can just tie this into a knot. And I want you to stay on the inside of the project here. Now when we go to drag this to finish it off I wanna just drag it through some of the fibers. Do not let this hit the other side. So if you turn this over you should not see that needle going through. And I want you to go through once, twice, and three times. So any loose ends that you did have that's the best way to hide these in. So I'm gonna wanna do that with the very starting strand and I wanna keep that strand again on the inside so just going back and forth a total of three times and then I'll be right back in a moment. So we have to turn this to the other side once we're ready for that. I'll see you in a second. So now that I have this sewn in I'll just turn this around in real time just to not have any, if I have any surprises it'll be in person. <laughs> There you go. So everything has been attached here. So you can see because of the color transition it's not gonna be the exact same thing on the other side of that but when you're wearing it you could just position that in a way so that the rest of this cowl is looking pretty awesome. So this is uh, Anita's Tunisian Stepping Textures Cowl. She also is making a headband and also a hat with this in the future. Um, she's still working on the hat but the, the headband will be available at some point in the future. But it's a really neat idea and I think it's a great little starter project for Tunisian as well. Have a good one and we hope to see you again real soon. Bye bye.